everybody this is randy from randy's crafty creations and i wanted to come to you today with a video on how i made this really pretty um tickled pink card using the fabulous flamingo stamp set from stampin up and using the marbled background stamp um, i haven't played a lot with background stamps so uh, this is in our new catalog it's called marbled it's really pretty i'm gonna do another video later where i'm gonna use a brayer and brayer different colors on it and then stamp it because i have a couple ideas and i think it's gonna be really nice um but for this one, I just inked it and stamped it. So I used the marbled stamp set to make the background on this card. Isn't that nice? I just didn't, I didn't have um, lemon lime twist background paper that I wanted to use for this. So I just made my own. Anyhow, I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm going to show you how I do it with the Misty. Um, so uh, Stampin' Up! We sell a size F block, which is rather large. And to do a background stamp, a lot of times it's recommended that you... Put your stamp on the block, turn it upside down, ink it up, and place your piece of paper on top. Well, as I've said in other videos, my fingernails get in the way for stuff like that. So I found it easier to use my Misty, um, and I'm using my Mini Misty, where as you can see, the background stamp just fits in perfectly. Um, and I made a whole bunch of these, so I was pretty happy with it. I'm going to show you how I did that. Let me push that aside. Um, we're going to use the the fabulous flamingo stamp set and it is a three stamp process we have the body which has the legs um, we have the the basic body piece which is the lighter pink here and then we have the outline and i did that in the berry burst again so we're going to make this card i also used <coughs> the stitched oval framelits. I don't know if you can see. See the stitching on this oval here? So I use the stitch oval framelits for that. Okay, that shakes the camera. I can't do that much. Um, the stitched oval framelits and then I used the um, layering ovals for the scalloped edge around the outside. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let me put this aside. And the first thing I'm gonna do, oh, sorry, let me back up. Our colors are Berry Burst, Lemon Lime Twist, and Pink Pirouette. Okay, I have my pieces pre-cut here. Let me move them over. Okay, so I went ahead and I put, like I said, the background stamp right inside my Mini Misty. Fits perfect. And because I'm doing the whole thing, I'm not going to use my magnets because they'll just get in the way. That's why they're sitting up here in my frame. And I'm just gonna lay my piece of paper in there, okay? Um, the nice thing about the Misty is that you can stamp with either photopolymer stamps or red rubber stamps by either leaving in the grid pad if you're gonna use photopolymer stamps or taking it out if you're gonna use a red rubber stamp. So that that way you have the right, um, the right depth for your stamping. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up with Lemon Lime Twist. And because it's a background stamp, and it's so big, I'm going to take my ink to my stamp. All right, ink it up real good. So like I said, in Stampin' Up! we carry a F block, and the F block is sized for the background stamps. And you would ink it up, and you would lay your piece of paper on top, smooth it with your hand, and you'd get your good impression. Again, like I said, my fingernails get in the way for that, so I prefer to do it this way. So I have my piece of paper in there, I have my stamp on my Mini Misty. I'm just going to lay it in there, and I'm just going to push it around, and pull it up, and look at that background. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. Let me do another one. I have, I'm, I'm working on a, a set of these, so I'm going to do these last three background pieces while we are here. So again, I'm just going to ink this up. Push it down. That time it stuck to my stamp, that's okay. There's a little crevice there. Pull that off. All right, let's do one more. And I just keep re-inking my background stamp. And then stamp down. It's all good. There we go. So now I made my own um, background paper. I'm going to set that aside. 
So I've got my own background paper. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp on my oval. Okay, so I've got my stitched oval. I've got an extra piece of um, plain paper down here because I'm going to be stamping off when I do these palm leaves, if you would. So inside the set, and this one like it says photopolymer, so I'm using my Stampin' Pierce mat. I've got these palm leaves. And these fit great on a C block, so let me just go ahead and put that on there. I'm going to ink that up. I'm going to stamp that right about there. I'm going to turn my stamp over. I'm going to do it at the top, right about there. I just felt like it needed something around my flamingo. So that's all I'm doing with the lemon lime twist now. Well, let me put that stamp away. And then we'll go ahead and we'll work on our flamingo body in the berry burst. So I'm going to leave that there. So the next stamp I'm going to be using is the really long body piece. And that's going to go on a size E block. I'm going to lay that down so it holds its shape and I'm just going to pick it up with the block. Alright, so we're done with this. We close that up. Alright, now I'm going to use the berry burst for the body. I'm just going to ink that up. Sorry, I'm doing that off the camera. don't mean to. Alright, I'm going to ink that up. And because it's photopolymer, I can see through it. And I'm just going to position it so I can get most of the stamp on my oval. Okay. Pull that off. There. Alright, so now we have the base of our flamingo. All right, let me pull this off. And now we're going to stamp this body piece right here. I'm going to leave my berry burst open, but we're going to stamp that body piece. I'm doing it in pink pirouette. All right, I'm going to pick that stamp up, and I'm going to pick that stamp up using my D-block because it fits on there nicely. Okay, I'm just going to gently ink it up. And you can see right through it. So I'm going to look through it. I'm going to line it up with my flamingo body. And I'm going to stamp it down. Okay, and that just gives us that light, that light pink. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the outline in. So I'm going to go back to my berry burst. That's why I left it open. Let me clean that off. Um, I like to use my, stamp, my Stampin' Up Stampin' Scrub. Um, I also, when I'm doing two-step stamping, just to be... To, be quick to move it aside. I use my um, stamp chamois just to clean it so I don't get all inky and then I go back later and I clean everything with my stamping scrub. But it works great um, when I'm filming and I just want to move things over. Alright, so now I'm inking up. Let me do it again on camera. Inking up the body and you can see I've done this in black before because my stamp has black ink on it. Alright, so we're going to line it up. And stamp it down. Excellent. And now we have the outline of the body. All right. So we have that. And that's going to be our medallion piece to go on our card. Close this up. Oh, actually, my bad. Let me open that back up again because I forgot we have to stamp Tickled Pink for You. I'm going to stamp that on this piece here. I grab that out of the stamp set. It's got some cute sayings in it. Um, Thanks. I love you kind of a lot. Tickled Pink for You. That was awesome. Got, got some nice sayings in them. They're cute. They're fun. It's a very fun set. Tickled Pink for You. Go ahead and ink that up. 
and I'm going to ink it up off to the left because I'm going to go ahead and flag the ends. And I cut this strip to be one and an eighth. There. So that strip is cut one and an eighth. And great. So we're just going to flag the ends and we're going to use our triple banner punch for that. Our punches lay nice and flat. They lock. What I like this one is you can do um, an inch, inch and a half, or two inches, but really you can do any size in between. I just turn mine over. So I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to feel my way. It's not going to fit inside a guide, cause, guide, because remember I said it's an, um, one and an eighth inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide it in to where it looks about right, and I'm just going to flag it. So like I said, it's not going to be exactly centered and I'm okay with that but it's still gonna give me that nice that nice flagged end all right so I've got that piece there put and punch down all righty so now we're ready to go ahead and put our stitched oval on top of our scalloped oval and I'm gonna use a little bit of my snail adhesive for that And they just, they layer nicely. Okay. I am going to put this one on top of a piece that I have cut, whoops, at an inch and a quarter. Because I just want a little border. And I'm going to go ahead and just Flag the ends. Now, I can stick it back in my punch. Why don't I just do that? I can stick it back in the punch, or I can go ahead and do it um, manually. Because I have, I have an outline to go by this time. Okay, but I want to get a little bit closer. So, I'm just going to make it easy. And I'm just going to go ahead and do it myself. Because I already glued them together. And like I said, it's um, easy enough to follow because I've already flagged it. So there. There is that. Tickled pink for you. Go ahead and close my punch. All right, so I have those two pieces. I'm going to get a piece of the lemon lime twist ribbon. And I always put a little piece of scotch tape on the end. To keep it closed or I uh, use a rubber band. All right, and I'm just going to measure this out and cut off a piece about there with my paper snips. Our scissors are great for cutting the ribbon with no fraying on the end, which makes it nice. All right, let me go ahead and put the tape back onto that. All righty. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. And my ribbon is going to go down here. So I'm just going to take some adhesive oh, along the back here. Okay. And then I'll take my ribbon along the back. Oh, that might be too low. I just wanted to put the ribbon on um, behind the little banner. Great, 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 great. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some dimensionals. And I'm gonna put them on the back of my banner. I am probably going to use three. Yep, go ahead and grab my oval. four on that one. Okay, got that. All right, I used, I'm using a piece of berry burst cardstock. This was eight and a half by 11, cut it five and a half, 
and then scored at four and a quarter for my card base. All right, I'm gonna put this piece on my card base first because it's easier to put the adhesive on before I um, put my pieces on with all those dimensionals. And because I have the ribbon on there, I'm, I'm gonna use a lot of adhesive just to make sure that it stays stuck. Not straight, not straight. Excellent. All right. There's that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the banner first. Just to make sure that I get the oval in the right place. I'm going to take the adhesive off the, or take the um, wrappers off. Take old pink for you. Okay, it's crooked. Okay, wonderful. Tickle pink for you. Let me go ahead and pull the backing off my oval. And I'm just going to put that on like that. And there you go. You've made a cute, simple card with your own background paper. So, little embellishments. These right here are our new glitter enamel dots. So today is July 3rd, 2017, if you're watching today. These are on back order until the end of July. Um, so worth the wait. Go ahead, put them in your cart. They'll send them when they're ready. But uh, I don't know if you can see them. They're very glittery. But they're nice enamel dots. And they just put on that perfect that perfect little touch. And they have the adhesive on the back. And they're... Um, I love the colors. Love the colors. Does it say here on the back what the colors are? I'll have them listed below. Yeah, I'll have them listed below. But anyway, um, those are really pretty. So again, thanks for watching. I wanted to go ahead and make this video for you guys today using some of the new product from our new catalog. Uh, if you don't have a new catalog, if you make a purchase at randycollins.stampinup.net. As a first time customer, I will send you a catalog. Uh, the month of July is also a fantastic time to join my team. If you would like to join my team as a hobby demonstrator, meaning you just want your own discount, now is a great time. Uh, there is a special bonus for anybody that signs up in the month of July. They get a, um, a bonus pack with their starter kit. And in that bonus pack is some of our grid paper, uh, paper snips, a bone folder, a snail adhesive, two D-sized blocks, which you saw me use the D-sized block twice because I used it for the base of the flamingo and for the outline. Um, two D-sized blocks all in your starter kit uh, if you sign up in July. So even if you're not interested in doing this as a business, now is a great time to sign up because of all the extras that you would get in your kit. So if you have any questions, you can email me at <clears throat> randycollins.247 at gmail.com. You can visit my blog, randyscraftycreations.com. Go to my Stampin' Up! page. All the information will be linked below here, but I would love to have you on my team. So again, thanks for watching. I'm Randy from Randy's Crafty Creations, and have a great day.